What do all of these people, most of which you have probably never seen before, have in common? They are all owners of the most expensive car ever made, the Ferrari 250 GTO. And in this video, we are going to have a closer look at the cars they own and how they came to owning a 40 plus million dollar machine. Good afternoon, guys. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. My name is David and today we're going to have a look at who are the owners of the legendary Ferrari 250 GTO. But before we do, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more car related content every week. The Ferrari 250 GTO, GTO standing for Gran Turismo Omologato, entered production in 1962 and was built to race in the Group 3 GT car racing. 39 cars were made and cost 18,000 when new, which would translate to around 150,000 in today's money. This means that for the highest price ever paid for a 250 GTO of 70 million dollars, you could buy 466 cars in 1962. The 250 GTO's racing debut was at the 12 Hours of Sebring in 1962, where it was driven by American racing driver Phil Hill and Belgian driver Olivier Gendebien. Gende Bowen? Gende... Uh, yeah, I'm very sorry to all the Belgian fans out there. But anyway, the main point is that over the three years the 250 GTO has spent racing over various tracks and circuits around the world, it has built up an impressive racing career and won numerous car races. Fun fact, before its first ever race, Hill and Gendebien were furious that they had to drive the slower GT class car in comparison to the faster and full race spec Ferrari Testarossa or TR for short. Enzo, this ain't cool. Why are we supposed to drive this piece of crap? Stai zitto e fai empatire. Okay, that was a very bad attempt at Italian. Yeah, um, I probably shouldn't have done that. But anyway, perhaps because of its successful racing career and uh, the limited production numbers, the 250 GTO has grown in popularity in the Ferrari collector's circles over the years and its price has increased exponentially. But now, let's finally have a look at who are the few lucky owners of this amazing vehicle. Let me start with perhaps the most well-known owner of them all, the worldwide famous fashion designer Ralph Lauren. Lauren started his career as a salesman for a Thai company and started the Ralph Lauren Corporation in 1967, selling, you guessed it, also ties. Over the years, he has built up not only a worldwide fashion empire, but also a supercar collection worth $350 million and consisting of cars such as the 1959 Ferrari TR, three 1996 McLaren F1s, a Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing, or the Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic. In 2017, Ralph Lauren has used his cars quite creatively as a backdrop for his fall-winter fashion show. And while researching for this video, I have found out that he even sells the model of his exact 250 GTO on the official Ralph Lauren website for a nice $1,595. That sneaky little businessman. Continuing in the fashion theme, Lauren Stroll has built up his fortune by bringing fashion brands like Pierre Cardin, Ralph Lauren or Michael Kors to Canada. His son, Lance Stroll, is a Formula One racing driver since 2017, and here is a short story of how that happened. Dad, I want to race in F1. Okay, son. Dad, my team is last on the grid. Buy me a better team. Okay, son. Dad, Aston Martin racing team sounds more prestigious than Racing Point F1 team. Okay, son. Okay, maybe this was a bit harsh, but only a bit. Stroll also owns an extensive Ferrari collection, but that wasn't enough for him, and he also bought a Ferrari dealership in Quebec, Canada. <laughs> Moving on the other side of the big pond, the Ferrari 250 GTO chassis 3767 GT is painted in a distinct BP green and was owned by a British Formula One driver, David Piper. In 1974, this car was acquired by Anthony Bamford and he is the owner to this day. The funny thing is that Bamford wasn't satisfied with just owning one 250 GTO like everyone else and so, drumroll please, bought himself another one. This time, 
the chassis number 4399 GT. I suppose that in the Ferrari collector's world, there aren't too many things cooler than owning two 250 GTOs. So who is Anthony Bamford? He is a British businessman and the chairman of JCB, which in case you've never heard of it, is a company making tractors and drilling equipment. The firm was founded by his father, Joseph Cyril Bamford, JCB is literally just an abbreviation of his name, in 1945 and has approximately 11,000 employees. Bamford was also knighted in 1990 and his entire title is the Right Honorable the Lord Bamford. This title is perhaps the only thing which is cooler than owning two 250 GTOs. Wow. Given his passion for cars, you would have thought that JCB could also start producing supercars and rival brands like Pagani or Koenigsegg. After all, Ferruccio Lamborghini was also making tractors before getting into supercars. Ferruccio Lamborghini. Ferruccio Lamborghini. But the Right Honorable Lord Bamford had a different idea. Hmm, let's make the fastest tractor in the world. The Fast Track 2 has 1,016 horsepower and reached a speed of 153 miles per hour in 2019. When we reached 103 miles per hour with the Fast Track in the summer, I was convinced we could go even faster. And the JCB team has risen to the challenge by setting this new record. Lord Bamford said in a statement after the record. If you look at the photos of his 250 GTOs closely, you can see that Bamford does everything he can in order to promote the family business. After all, if the business is booming, he can buy a third 250 GTO. <laughs> this 250 GTO is owned by Samuel Robson Walton, the heir to the fortune of Walmart, the largest retailer in the world. With a net worth of $52.9 billion, he's the wealthiest 250 GTO owner. And he could buy another 755 of them in case he crashed his own. The good thing is that unlike Bamford, Walton doesn't use his 250 GTO as a driving billboard. Could you imagine a 250 GTO with a big Walmart on its side? The chassis 3647 GT is owned by James McNeil Jr. And if you haven't ever heard of him, that is because not much is known about him other than the fact that he owns this wonderful machine. He bought his 250 GTO in 1967 and thus is the longest consecutive owner of one of these cars alive today. This 250 GTO belongs to Anthony Wang, a former CEO of CA Technologies which is a software corporation providing system software and application software. This is quite boring in my books, but what is less boring is the fact that his wife, Lulu Wang, has her own 250 GTO. I imagine this is how that conversation went. Honey, why do you have a 250 GTO and I only have a 1959 Ferrari 250 GT? Are you cheaping out on me? Ah, uh, sh**. No, but seriously, look at this picture. She looks like she's ready to rip the track apart. Pink Floyd drummer and avid supercar collector Nick Mason also owns a 250 GTO and frequently races it at classic supercar races. He made his fortune while creating hit songs like Another Brick in the Wall or Wish You Were Here with his bandmates in the 1970s and purchased his 250 GTO for £37,000 in 1977. It is impressive that even though he's well in his 70s and no longer has this long hippie hair and eye-catching moustache, he still drives his cars on tracks to this day. And last one on the list of 250 GTO owners, at least for this video, is the American businessman and entrepreneur Craig McCaw. McCaw has made $2 billion after selling his cellular telephone industry company to AT&T and made headlines right afterwards when he had to give $460 million uh, out of this money to his wife as a settlement for divorce. This was the most expensive divorce in the American history at that time. McCaw's GTO was originally produced for the British Formula One racing driver legend Sterling Moss and is highly praised by supercar collectors for its racing history as well as special lime green paint. But this is everything for today's video. 
If you didn't fall asleep while watching the video and still enjoyed it, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe for more automotive content. In the comments below, you could also leave some feedback or ideas for future videos. And hopefully, see you soon.